Hi, I'm Nadra Tawab, and in this week's episode, I will be talking about my post, As You Mature, The More You Realize. I got that title from um, the old saying, um, when you get older, you realize, and I thought about age and maturity being two different things. Um, age being how many years you've been on this earth and maturity being how much you've learned from your life experiences, the experiences from other people, how much wisdom you have, and that can happen at any age. And that's why we see sometimes when we say um, kids are wise beyond their years or you know, maybe some adults are you know, 20 years old and they sound like 40 year olds or that sort of thing, that is maturity. Um, so I just wanted to make that distinction between the older you get and the more mature that you become, correct? Yes. So um, in my work with relationships, I hear this maturity versus age thing come up with adult children and their parents. They talk a lot about um, their parents being emotionally mature and sort of outgrowing their parents and age. And again, that happens because maturity is not a product of age. So let's get into the post. Um, the first bullet that I have is no one has it all together. And this is so true. No one, absolutely no one has it all together. Even the, um, influencer on Instagram that has, you know, a gazillion followers and they have all of these um, beautiful pictures. They do not have it all together. And I think a lot of times what we see, particularly on social media, is what, what people want other people to see. Um, for instance, um, I was thinking the other day, I was like, wow, people must think that um, I'm like working all day and they don't realize like I wake up in the morning, I journal, I get my kids ready for school, I come to work, I go home, I cook, I, you know, I watch my TV, like all of these other things that I do in life. Um, I have family members who, you know, call me and, you know, I have friends and I have, you know, like all of this stuff, like no one has it all together. I've certainly um, dropped the ball in some areas and all of that stuff. Like no one has it all together. Trusting your gut the first time is usually the best option. I remember um, in elementary school when we would take standardized tests in Michigan, it's the MEEP test, but when we would take standardized tests, um, the teacher will always advise whatever your first answer is, don't go back and change it because once you change it, you will typically pick the wrong answer. And I think that's so true for most things in life that we already know what we want and we go back, we second guess ourselves, we overthink it. And then that puts us in a position to get these things that we don't really want. So it's so important to just trust your gut and go with the thing that you feel um, is true for you, the thing you already know. The world is more gray than black and white. So absolutely, um, there is, uh, you know, my belief is there is no such thing as all bad or all good. There is, you know, some wiggle room within that. Um, you know, bad people could be great gardeners. Um, good people could have a bad street. Like all of these things. I think society places like some sort of hierarchy on the bad things you could do. And then that makes you a completely bad person. But uh, there is no such thing as like black and white. Like this is the only way I think there, unless it's a law. Right. But outside of that, there's a lot of gray in the things that we do and the people that we are. And we have to um, if we want to be mature and more relaxed in life, you know, we have to realize that things aren't always so clear cut. You can't control other people. So this is a big thing. I get so many messages about how do I convince? How do I make this person think? How do I um, help my partner let go of this relationship they have with their brother? You know, just all of these things about convincing people to think like us, controlling other people, making people do this. We can't do it. If we could do it, I might be out of a job. 
because I feel like uh, we really try, like we really try to do it because we th we know it doesn't work, but there is something in us that says maybe it could this time if we try hard enough. But really what I think we do with other people is we inspire them and that is not control. Like we can inspire people to change, right? But we cannot control whether they do or not. So you can't control people. If you take nothing else from this list, please take that. Um, holding grudges is not the best use of your time. So seriously, um, most of the time when we're holding grudges, the people don't even know. Like they have no clue you're holding a grudge. Meanwhile, they're off, they're eating their IHOP, they're having a great time and you are pissed. So let it go. It, it feels so good to just release the pressure valve just live your life um and i'm not saying that all the experiences we have with people uh, would be rectified with us just letting go but i think it gets easier when you say to yourself i will not allow this person to have um control over me because really that's what grudge holding is this person still has control over you because they're impacting your feelings so i don't want this person to have control and what can i do about that being honest saves a lot of time like yes it does so i know it's so hard to be honest because we worry about being me how do we say it what do we do but it saves a lot of time because i think sometimes in our desire to be nice we are um, agreeing to things we don't want to do. Um, we're not having the best time doing these things, but yeah, you know, I'm just thinking about how we commit to experiences that we really don't enjoy because we think we have to. And I think it would, if we could just be honest and say, you know, I really don't like roller skating. I think we would save so much time for ourselves and the other people and they can have people in that experience that really enjoy it as much as they do so being honest childhood although short was very impactful i have met with people of all ages some 70 80 um, and they still talk about childhood i know it's only 18 years but childhood is when we really um learn how to exist in a world we learn about ourselves we carry those messages and we carry those for life you know it is our work to maybe overcome those experiences that we didn't necessarily enjoy from childhood or to recreate uh, experiences that we did enjoy so it's very important to be mindful of why you do something and how that's probably connected to childhood just a little bit and I know that for most people, they think like therapists are always talking about everything has to do with childhood, but we talk about it because it's true, it really is. Uh, life is too short to stay in unhealthy relationships. When I think about, um, and most of us don't know, like our lifespan, right? And when we think about how long we could possibly be here, like how do we want that life to look? And we really have to consider that if we want to live a full life. And I know, you know, we can't avoid unhealthy relationships sometimes, particularly with family, you know, it's our lot, but we can control how we exist in those relationships um, and whether we continue to be in them. So um, just think about, you know, what you want in your life, what you want your life experience to be like. People tell you exactly who they are and it's your job to listen. So when people say, um, they called me a liar, everybody's saying I'm a liar, I'm selfish, um, I have commitment issues. These are things that they are saying about themselves or maybe things that other people have said about them. I would evaluate how those things might be true. And oftentimes, um, even when we don't wanna believe it on some level, um, people are telling us exactly who they are that doesn't mean that you don't deal with the person maybe it's you know kind of coats how you deal with them so you have the power to decide because you have accepted what you know to be true 
Winning an argument is not as important as finding a solution. So solution focused arguing is where you talk about a topic and you actually come up with a solution to that topic. So um, I don't want your mom coming over unannounced. I think a lot of times when we argue, we'll just go back and forth. Why don't you understand me? Why don't you see this is a big deal that she comes over unannounced? You need to think like me, like this sort of arguing. What can we do? So I don't want your mom to come over unannounced. The next time she comes over um, unannounced, I would like you to say, um, we asked you to call before. Like, what is the solution to this thing? So it might be um, really difficult to think about those solutions in the moment, but that's why when you're arguing as two people, like collectively come up with some sort of solution so we're not repeating the same arguments over and over because when we don't have solutions we absolutely repeat having a support system improves your mood and quality of life we've all seen the golden girls so now we know that's true um we need friends we need a support system um even you know pets i know emotional support pets are such a big thing right now and that's because it's so important so we need support Everything and everyone is not worth your energy. This is absolutely true. I get, you know, some ridiculous DMs and comments on Instagram that, you know, are mean. I can't believe you would say that. You're a therapist. How could you say that? You're a horrible person, blah, blah, blah. And I, I you know, I do my best not to even read them through. I kind of pick out some words. I'm like, oh, this is me. And I just block the person because... I don't, you know, let me get this energy back to you. I'm not upset enough to care about this because then I read all of these nice comments and I just want to focus on that energy. So be mindful of the ways in which you give your energy away to every, you know, to everything and every person and be decisive about how you want to use your energy. I think sometimes there are some things that are worth your energy, but you need to have a short list of what those things are. It can't be every single thing that's happening. I'm going to grab some water. So, um, the question for the week. So I was asked, um, about dumping your therapist. So a woman wrote a Q and a question asking, I've seen my therapist three times. I know I don't like the therapist. Is it okay to dump my therapist? Absolutely. Therapists are like any other people. If we're, we're dumped, um, most of the time therapists don't even know they're dumped because people just don't come back and we don't know why. Um, so that's one way that people dump therapists. Another way is, so yes, therapists get ghosted. Um, another way to dump a therapist is just to send a short email and say, Hey, I won't be returning to therapy. Right. Or, you know, maybe you want to give a little more, maybe not the exact reason, cause you may not want to create a back and forth, but you can dump a therapist more than anything. The really important thing about the therapy process being effective is you having a good relationship with your therapist. Like you need to like your therapist. You need to um, respect your therapist. You need to be open to fee feedback from your therapist. If you can't find yourself doing that with the therapist, you may need to find another therapist. Research has shown more important than um, like treatment modality. And what I mean by that is whether it's cognitive behavioral, EMDR, um, family-based, or any of these treatment styles, the most important thing for success in therapy is having a good relationship with your therapist. So if there is someone that you're seeing that you do not like, it is completely your prerogative to find a new therapist. Thank you guys so much. I will be back next week for another video.